I think today is the first day in like two weeks where I haven't felt like being eaten brain first by a sack of zombies in a club, a soccer zombie club. I've decided to give this carnivore diet one last shot for good this time. No plants, nobody can have any excuse this time. No cucumber juice, no kombucha, just meat, salt, water. And boy, let me tell you, there is an adaption phase. Even though I've been mostly carnivore, like 95% carnivore for 10 months, unless you're 100%, you gotta reinitiate yourself. Like you're a freshman in high school, you gotta get patty whacked on the ass. It hurts. Help. Help. So today I wanna talk about a few things that I've learned, some of the struggles I've encountered along the way, and finally I'm feeling some energy at least today in the evening. So we'll, we learned a couple things. Very little, but a few things have been learned. When I first went carnivore over 10 months ago, I felt like absolute shit for two weeks at least. Diarrhea, no energy, just like a nightmare. But I knew there was an adaption phase. I heard everybody goes through it, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. And immediately my gut calmed down, so I was like, well, whatever, I'll suffer through the low energy and diarrhea. At least it doesn't hurt, it's not stabbing me. So I did that. Around the two or three week mark, I just, I noticed a boost in energy. I felt like I hit the light switch on, I made it. It wasn't consistent, but at times I felt better than I ever have stronger, more mentally alert, like things were firing on all cylinders, at least three cylinders. I ain't got no eight cylinder truck, but I can get up a hill as long as it ain't too steep. But my monkey ass is curious. I wanted to add new foods to my diet, so I looked at it as this is my journey back towards plant-based. I'm flustered. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, doggy. Hey, doggy. It's always so awkward vlogging in public. I've never got used to it. Over five years on YouTube, every time I see somebody, I'm like, oh. Oh, shit. The flat sun is bright today, my friend. Oh, thank you, stop sign. Oh, you yeah. So even though I was, like, miraculously healing on this carnivore diet, I still wanted to start adding plants back in and then make my way back to veganism. That was the end goal. I think the first thing I added was just olive oil because I was eating too much protein. I'm like, I need more fat. And there wasn't much in Thailand, so I tried olive oil. Immediately, my nose clogged up. That's one of the first things I noticed that cleared on the carnivore diet. People say it's not healing. My nose would not just clear if it wasn't the most healing diet on earth. You gotta accept it. Some vegans are so close-minded they don't believe meat could possibly heal anybody. Go look up Paleo Medicina. It's this place in Hungary. They're healing all kinds of shit. Cancer, people sick. Go there. I want to go there. I should go. So the olive oil didn't work. And then I tried macadamia nuts, trying avocados, little things like this. And nothing's working. I feel either the fiber is stabbing me. It ain't working. So that's what I've been doing for 10 months. Mostly carnivore, but not carnivore trying to add in plants and none of them are working so stop why am i doing it i'm just gonna stop we gotta try this one last time to see if it actually works and heals myself so these past couple weeks i've been eating nothing but meat and added animal fat and some salt i've even removed the bacon now just because there are ingredients in there there's celery extract that came from a plant and that no no and I gotta be honest with you, I have felt like absolute horse shit this whole time. Because you have to re-enter that adaption phase. And I don't think I've ever got into keto land where I'm like truly fat burning mode. I think when you're on a carnivore diet, a lot of people are still in sugar burning mode because they eat so much protein. And that's what I was doing for a long time. That's a lot of, what was that? <laughs> Hello. Hey, Buppy. Hey. Hey, little. <laughs> <laughs> social when she's the old lady. Wait, that was like I don't know if I got any of that on film. God damn, this camera has no autofocus. How am I supposed to keep up with the world around me? So in my opinion, most people on a carnivore diet are eating so much protein. We don't need that much protein. Come on now. And you're turning a good chunk of it into sugar. You're not really fat burning man. <laughs> You're a sugar burner, sugar bitch. Now this may be my old vegan hippie self talking, 
but I do believe too much protein is not good for the kidneys. And there's a reason for it. You honking at me? I know my legs are sexy. Oh, you can't see them. <laughs> I just watched a video by Paul Saladino, so don't even think about posting a link to it down below. He said, is protein bad for the kidneys? And he went on to debunk it. And I was just like, you didn't debunk a damn thing. He's a medical doctor, so he sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but I'm a YouTuber, and I'm a certified detoxification specialist, so that just means I know how to kill people really fast with fruit. It's beneficial. I have a clinic. <laughs> so here's what I disagree with in his video. One way to tell if you have damaged kidneys is to get a blood test, and it's the creatinine levels. And from Dr. Morse Hippie Days, you want that below like 0.6. Anything above that, you're starting to lose your kidney filtration abilities. So I still believe that. I believe that. Mine was getting better and better, and I haven't tested it yet on this carnivore diet. I will do a blood test once my stupid pink eye heals. Help me. Help me. So Mr. Paul Saladino says his creatinine level is 1. Like, in my opinion, 0.7 is bad, 0.8 is terrible, 0.9 you should see somebody for help, a psychiatrist maybe, and then 1 is like, are you kidding me? Are you drinking gasoline? Like, what's wrong with you? You're dying. So his creatinine is at 1, in my opinion, showing kidney damage, and he says that because some people with more muscle have higher creatinine levels, so that's natural, and I'm thinking immediately, like, do you think it might be because muscular people are eating more animal protein and damaging their damn kidneys? You don't gotta build a rocket to be a rocket scientist. I mean, the telltale sign of kidney weakness is the bags under the eyes. I'm gonna make a whole video on this because I've noticed a trend on keto dieters. They all got that puffy eye, black eyed raccoon shit. I don't wanna develop it. I do not want that in my life. Do you see it? I hear it. Planes are fake. The flat earth is real. So I've been lowering my protein and upping the fat. That's what I learned from Paleo Medicina. I mean, I've always known it, but I didn't know the extent. They say two grams of fat per every gram of protein. Do you have any idea how hard that is? I've been entering my food into chronometer. I'm nowhere near it. Unless I add like three tablespoons of beef tallow to my bacon. Like bacon is the ideal ratio. So you can imagine any other meat not as fatty as bacon is like throwing you out. It throws you right out. So it almost seems like an unattainable dream to get this two to one ratio. I mean, I had some tuna in the freezer. This like nice wild caught red tuna, it's delicious. I looked on the package. 0.5 grams of fat per 24 grams of protein. I was like, what? You want a 2 to 1 fat to protein ratio? I was at 1 to 50. Complete opposite. That's tuna is trash. It's trash meat found in a trash can in the ocean. So I'm looking at everything now. A can of salmon has 3 grams of fat to 11 grams of protein. So that's out. Unless you eat 5 tablespoons of lard with it. I would like to know your experience with this. Do you have to go that high? Because it seems impossible. Like, you can't eat any meat. Even cow tongue is 70% fat. But when you look at the grams, fat to protein, it's not even that much. <laughs> There's, it's like, not even close. It's like 1.2 to 1. How do you get two? You gotta butter your fucking tongue. But that's exactly what I did today. I cooked up a cow tongue in the pressure cooker. I put a bunch of beef tallow on it. And, like, I feel good now. Finally. Hey, puppy. You look like a wolf. You're a wolf. Are you a wolf? Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> High-fat vegan was so much easier. You didn't have to think of any of this. Because there ain't no protein in the damn thing. It was like every nut, every seed, is, like, easily four to one but the vegan diet has its own challenges. You gotta worry about the carbs. You got too much carbs with your fat. Every fat source has a carb. And then the fiber conundrum. How do you avoid that? Tell me. So we're giving it one last try. 
just see if we can get into that keto magic. Keto magic. I feel like it's about to happen. I'm on the edge, the cusp. So if I can reach that magic state, then I'll just stay in it. And I'm not going to experiment with trying to add in more plants that keep stabbing me. I'll, we'll just heal. Do this for like a year straight. Feel good and better and better and better and boom. Explode like a rocket. NASA's rockets always explode. They can't even leave the dome of our flat earth. They're made of paper mache. And it's an optical illusion. You can only see it through a telescope with kaleidoscope colors on it. You buy them at Kmart. We'll stop. So that's what I've been up to. I just got some water buffalo yogurt, grass fed. It seemed like the most natural thing. I want to start to inoculate my body. I'm taking like a teaspoon at a time and hoping that I don't freak out. I'm so scared. Dairy just. <laughs> they wanted to meet you. <laughs> Last week. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How's the vlog? Are, are we it's good, yeah. Your vlog? Yeah, you can be. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is subject? good weather in Canada now. Yes. We're is. enjoying the spring. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Cheers. <laughs> we had a special guest interview. <laughs> Sorry, my filming skills probably weren't on point for that whole thing, trying to keep them and concentrate on them. <laughs> I'll work on it. So yeah, I keep hearing all these stories of people healing their gut on fermented milk. Usually it's raw milk, but I can't find it. It's illegal here. So I think I can find it out in Guelph. Some farms out there have it, but Montreal Healthy Girl emailed me again today. And she was saying how like she keeps having clients get better on this raw milk and she makes kefir out of it. So I am going to try that. And so far so good I think. I've had it for like five days in a row. A little teaspoon. And so I do believe a beneficial bacteria component is needed to heal the gut. And we ain't doing it on my carnivore diet. So we need to add in that fermented dairy. And maybe I'll finally get a source of calcium. I'm usually at like 100 milligrams. It's worrying. But I believe my bone density is that of a, a moon warrior. And I may fall apart one day, but that's fine. Yeah, y'all want to be in the vlog? Oh, sure. Hey. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Vegetable police, if you want to see it. That's my channel. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just a bunch of special guest appearances today. Oh, how do I? There they are. Fun times here. It's funny, I said vegetable police. Usually I'm wearing a shirt, that's why I did that motion. But I wasn't wearing one, so I looked like an absolute moron. They were like, what is this? I don't know, just, you know, vegetable police is a common thing. Just super powered type of thing. So that's what I've been up to. I've been so thirsty since removing that cucumber juice, my only source of potassium. And I was having so much bacon so like overload of salt and no potassium, that's a nightmare. So I've removed most salt, but I'm having a little sprinkle of Himalayan real salt now. So my endurance is through the roof. Feeling good. It's a minor hill. It's big. I'm allowed to be tired and out of breath. Doesn't mean I'm not in shape. Get the monkey strength book. You can look like me one day, kids. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Consider giving it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down. If a hawk pooed on you, but you just rubbed it in to your skin because you know hawk poo has hawk poo seven, and that's a good moisturizer. You know that, you're smart. I believe in you. There's a cat. Will we end this vlog with a cat sighting? Oh, he's leaving. Oh, he's leaving forever. Oh, come back. Don't run under the bus. I'm trustworthy. Hey, kitty, kitty. God damn it. Just God damn it. He ran under a school bus. He offered his life to the heavens rather than be in the vlog. So, it's a little worrying. But whatever. His loss is our gain. <laughs> so, yeah. Once my pink eye heals up, 
I will not be wearing glasses, but I was worried, like, how do I make videos? I got disgusting pink eye, it won't go away, help me. So we just wear glasses. I can still make videos and teach you how to not die, even though I'm dying inside. That's it. Subscribe for more videos and learn how to die. <laughs>